Welcome to another edition of the Stone Butters Hour with Pastor Gary and Elder JC. That's me, Elder JC. Hello, radio and podcast land. We are here with another adventure into scriptures. Remember last week? We have interviewed the Apostle Peter, also known as Simon Peter, St. Peter, and the the one I love, Cephas, the Rock, who was one of the main disciples of Jesus Christ. After Jesus Christ's resurrection, Peter became one of the most influential Christian leaders in the first century. You can listen to that particular show on Peter at Spotify or SoundCloud or on any other our podcast medium at your convenience. That's right. You anytime. can listen to it anytime. If, Going to work on yep. your way home from work. Yep. Just laying up in your backyard. How about that? If you need excitement, tune in and listen to Peter talk about cutting off the <laughs> heir of Malchus, the head guard of the Jewish high priest Caiaphas, who participated in the arrest of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. I know that brought a lot of oohs and ahs. Yes, indeed. And, you know, that was an, that was so exciting. And we believe Yeshua got another convert once he walked over and picked up Malchus ear and put it back on his head as it healed instantly. Mm. Boy, that must have been a sight for all to see and witness Yeshua in action. Yes. And I know deep down it had to be difficult for the soldiers to arrest the chosen one. But today, we have a guest that was a true giant in his time, a man named Goliath. Many know the story of David and Goliath, and much is written about David as a boy, a teenager, to becoming a king. We'll invite David to the Stone Builders Hour sometime in the future because David was a man's man. He was a sinner, a murderer. He was a lousy dad. But the Almighty called this man a, a man, man after, after my, my own heart. heart. Wow. Yes. Praise God. There's hope for all of us. Yes, there is. But for now, let's turn our attention to uh, Goliath. Well, when you said about David, it's interesting being a sinner, murderer, lousy father. Sometimes we don't think we can fit into the kingdom of God based on our past. But just know God might be telling you you're a man or woman after his own heart. Yes. The biblical account of Goliath and David is one of the most popular stories in scriptures. We used to use it quite a bit in our church with our youth and with our children in getting across the whole message of listening to God and and having faith. It is a lesson of courage and like I said, faith and overcoming what seems like impossible odds. You know, audience, when you have those giants in your life, Mm. you need to overcome different situations. Just know that this particular topic is for you. Yeah, that means you get giants in debt, yes. giants in relationships, yes. giant with uh, finances, giants, you know, in uh, re- uh, relationships. Yes. Well, just know Goliath is described in detail in First Samuel seventeen one through fifty eight, and I just wanted to read uh, just a small portion. Um, some of that because one of the things that we emphasize is his size. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and he had bronze greaves on his legs and a bronze javelin was between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his iron spearhead weighed six hundred shekels and a shield bearer went before him but you know 600 shekels is quite a huge huge amount of carry and we'll get into how huge it is Mm -hmm. when we uh, move forward in the discussion so in his description as a philistine giant remember that he was defeated by the young david in single combat and yeah. the Elaw Valley were just well, how many stones? 
This is what? Yes. This you know he had a, several, several in his bag because he was waiting on the brothers if it was if they were going to come after him. This story signified Saul's unfitness to rule because as king, Saul should have fought for Israel, but was afraid of Goliath and lacked faith that the Almighty would deliver Israel victory over the Philistines. Because remember, as a giant, what do we call it? He was uh, showing his buff. Yeah. He was uh, also <laughs> calling everybody's bluff. Just send one man. That's all you have to send. I'll, whoever comes, if he kills me, you have victory. But if I kill him, I have victory. And I guess at nine feet, he was <laughs> yeah, that, a sight to behold. That's right. I think and, they call it smack now. Yes. How about that? Capping. Yes. Or, well, it was capping in, in our day. Our day. Yes. But maybe it's called smack now. But uh, JC, King Saul is another lesson that we need to address. But first, background on what led up to the battle between David and Goliath. Yes. The Philistines were the mortal enemy of the nation of Israel for hundreds of years. Yes, they were. When the Israelites finally settled in Canaan after Joshua, my man Joshua, conquered it, they had to contend with the Philistines. These two nations constantly fought one another throughout generations. Mm. The major reason the Philistines and the Israelites constantly had strife was because of their differing religious beliefs. Mm. The Philistines primarily believe in Dagon, and the Israelites believed in Yahweh or God or Jehovah or as we call him, the Almighty. Almighty. All right. These two gods were nothing alike, and this religious difference played out in the lives of the Philistines and the Israelite, informing their cultures and shaping their lives. Yahweh, or Jehovah, also let the Philistines remain in the land Mm. to test and punish those hard-headed Israelites. Whenever they strayed away from worshiping him. Uh, That's applicable to us today. Go back to Moses. Yes. Just remember that God uses others or who we deem as our enemies as our test and trial. I love that. That's right. And we all know about the story of Job. Yes. Where the Satan was among the, 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 the men, the sons of God. And God asked him, what are you up to? And Satan said, I'm around, you know, seeing who I can kill and destroy. And then the Almighty told Satan, have you tried my son Job? So God gave the evil and deceiver permission to go uh, uh, upset the apple cart of Job. Praise God. That's why he kept the Philistines there for the Israelites. to To test them out. But, you know, the Philistines defeated the Israelite armies on many occasions, and they even managed to get some of the Israelites to turn away from worshiping Mm. Yahweh, Mm. Jehovah, God. Mm. Well, I just wanted to bring one key thing to why the Philistines had such dominance in that area. And they used more advanced material in their culture. Uh, The Israelites and the Canaanites of those highlands still practiced Bronze Age skills, but the Philistines had advanced to an Iron Age culture, making them nearly invincible on the battlefield. So Saul could only muster up two swordsmen out of the 600 men he had, and they were using everything, axes, ox goats, sickles, or sharpened sticks. And remember, uh, when Samson was around, he used, what did he use? A jawbone of a donkey. So the Philistine army was fully outfitted with the advanced weaponry of the day. So that made him scared, scared too. Well, it's time to recognize our sponsor, Dr. Elton Powell of Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. Please call for an appointment, 850-402-9061. Or take time to visit his website at dynamicspineandwellness.com. Yes. And remember, he has a holistic approach um, to healing and to getting your bones in shape and helping you lose what lose weight, whose motto is live happy. happy. So stay tuned. We'll be right back to speak more on Goliath.
My name is Anne-Marie Baker and I used to have severe excruciating right arm and neck pain thanks to spinal decompression therapy from Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. I no longer have any pain or discomfort and my issues were resolved without having any surgery. Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center has helped me enjoy my life again. At Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center, we unlock your potential to be the best version of you and build your body to excellent health. Hi, my name is Dr. Powell, and we take pride in giving you fast and friendly service that is tailored to your needs. We provide safe, comfortable, and effective treatments using state-of-the-art equipment. Life is full of adjustments, so get yourself realigned for better, healthier future today. Call 402-9061. That's 402-9061. Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. Online at dynamicspineandwellness.com. Tune in to the Stone Builders Hour, a unique talk show hosted by Pastor Gary and Elder JC every Thursday at 5 o'clock on Wave 94.1. Make time to attend a real down home auction with the family. Gospel Express Ministry South is hosting its 25th benefit auction when Saturday, November 14th at the Lighthouse Children's Home, where 7771 East Mayhem Drive in beautiful Tallahassee. Bid on Amish-made furniture, craft items, quilts, and tools. Also, farm fresh food items such as apples, cheeses, and other tasty treats like home baked goodies. Yum! Breakfast starts at 7.30 a.m. and auction at 9. Stay for lunch and enjoy baked or barbecued chicken. For details, contact Merrill Dittweiler, 850-447-2033. Contact Merrill at 850-447-2033. Welcome back to the Stone Builders Hour. Yes, indeed. Before we continue with Goliath, and we know that Pastor Gary is going to be playing him, please know, as I said previously, you can listen to all our shows at your convenience on iTunes, Google Music, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Spotify. Yes. That means anytime you need a special word, anytime you need encouragement, you can tune in. Also, because, we have shows that go back to a year now. Yes, it is. And a it's, year, it's been a year. It has been since last October 2019. So you have a lot of information, you a lot of, of encouragement. You just have a lot of things that you can tune into and help yourself uh, as we are trying to do with our program. Also, we'd love for you to become a regular Stone Builder supporter uh, with a gift. Uh, you can go to our website, WeLivingStones.org. Or Cash App, dollar sign, Lstones51. I'll repeat that again. Cash App, dollar sign, Lstones51. And Pastor and I celebrated 48 years of marriage just wow, past August. Ago. I know, like in an instant, it seems mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. And we're asking all our listeners to join us with a special and recurring blessing of $4.80. It's easy to do. Yeah. Forty-eight dollars. Set up on uh, the Cash App automatic, or you can go to PayPal. Yes, uh, right on our website. website and set yes. it up uh, monthly. And we're asking, and we and we're asking if you can do it recurring. So four dollars and eighty cents is not that hard. It's less than a cup of coffee. You know that Starbucks coffee, five dollars. So yeah. you can spend less. And I just said I was going to drink coffee this morning. So you know, maybe you can invest uh, that four dollars eighty cents for uh, into. Now, I'm not even sure how that would work. I'm just trying to get you to, to donate four dollars and eighty cents a month. Praise God. Um, or it could be forty eight dollars, or four hundred and eighty dollars for those of you who know that you want to be uh, that you could be a blessing to the program and to the show continuing. Or it could be four thousand eight hundred dollars. Yes, uh, that's the that's, one. Yes, it is. Now for the rest of the story and details on the battle in Goliath. As Pastor stated, the feud between the Philistines and Israelites goes back hundreds of years and finally hit a boiling point around 1020 B.C. 
The Philistines assembled an army 15 miles west of Bethlehem, and we all know the story of Bethlehem, Uh and the Israelites respond by amassing their army to confront the Philistines. Both armies encamped facing each other across Elam Valley atop two ridges. Before we get started, Goliath, tell us a little about where you're from. Yes, I will. (laughs) I am from a city named Goth that is located near the Israelite territory at the end of the Elam Valley, about six miles south of the city of Ekron, southwest of Jerusalem. Goth was one of five Philistine royal cities, and it was located along a main trade trade route leading to the hill country in Judah. This area was very fertile with an abundant supply of water, and that's why the city grew so much. Wow, sounds enriched. But the most famous citizen of Goth was you, Goliath. That's right. (laughs) Uh, You're serious about this, I see. The giant who battled David in the Elam Valley. The Philistines' goal, though, was to take this territory away from the Israelites, because you guys have been going back and forth, and as we said, their God was testing them, Jehovah, Yahweh, the Almighty. In 1 Samuel 17, Goliath is never referred to as a giant, are you? No. But your proportions outlined in traditional Hebrew texts suggest you were a huge man. Yes, I was a giant. Okay. The traditional Hebrew text, the Masoretic text, states that Goliath was, what? Nine feet, nine inches tall. Uh, I think Pastor Gary is 6'4". That's three feet more. <laughs> However, Greek witnesses to the text, along with the oldest Hebrew text of this passage in existence from the Dead Sea Scrolls, says he might have been about 6'9". So, <clears throat> about two feet less, but about seven feet. That's still huge. Yeah, we got relatives. That, that's us. Uh, yes. And then uh, when you think about someone like Shaq, uh, Shaq uh, Shaquille O'Neal, who plays basketball, and he is seen as a giant. Just think if he was a little bit taller. You're looking up to somebody that. else. Yes. Which text is correct is a matter of debate per Zonarin academic scholar. So we're not going to get into whether he, we just know he was a huge man. Right. So it's up to you listeners and your imagination as to how tall Goliath was. So, Goliath, look, take it from here. I'm 10 feet tall. <laughs> I like to round up. What's a couple of inches anyways? All right. Well, the Israelites and the Philistines were facing each other in Judah in the Valley of Elah. Twice a day for 40 days and night, I came to the battlefield and taunted the Israelites to fight. In ancient cultures, champions were presented to fight to the death on the army's behalf. Whoever won was declared the winner. Our Philistine culture believed gods accompanied us into the battlefield. Our chief god, Dagon, always stood beside me in every battle, and I was confident I would destroy King Saul or whoever he put forth. Mm. We believed that the nation was the strongest god would prevail, and it was clear my god, Dagon, was superior. Each morning and night, I would go to the battlefield and taunt the Israelites and their job, their god, Jehovah. This humiliated the Israelites and made them blinded with anger. Ha, ha, ha. But they were cowards, all of them. And no one dare accept my challenge because the Israelites were a bunch of scaredy cats. Uh-oh. I know, the they, <laughs> I know they were afraid because I stood 10 feet tall and I was covered with armor from my head to my toes. The blade of my sword alone weighed more than 20 pounds. Mm. My helmet was made of brass and weighed 5,000 shekels of brass. 
The shaft of my spear was like a weaver's beam, and my spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing the shield carried it and went before me. I stood tall and bold against those Israelites. I hated them. And you were teasing them or taunting them for 40 days and no one came forth, not even King Saul. Mm -hmm. But Saul and his army, I think, believe they became desperate to kill you (laughs) because you were (laughs) insulting their God. (laughs) It's interesting that King Saul didn't move forward. But you really got under Saul's skin because he told his army and sent a decree for the battlefield that he would offer his daughter in marriage and a lifetime tax exemption for anyone who would volunteer to fight you, Goliath. Did you know that? (laughs) (laughs) Well, Goliath, as you now know, your adversary became David, the youngest son of Jesse, an Aphrodite who had eight sons, and they were all at the battle. Jesse's three older sons, oh, his three older sons were at the battle, and David followed Saul to the battlefield, but David was really there to help feed the army, because back during those days, families who had sons in the army uh, usually supported the army with food and other things that they needed. David's brothers' names were Eliab, the firstborn, then Abinadab, and the third, Shammah. But soon after David returned home from the battlefield to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem, which is about 15 miles, but There's more to the story because I know David was brave and he wouldn't take it. But we will continue with that in time. We're going to take a few more minutes from our sponsors. So stay tuned because we'll be right back to hear more about the battle with Goliath. If someone loves you, they don't hit you. Hi, this is Dewey Rio with Noble, the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives. Dating or relational violence is an act or threat of violence by one member of a couple against the other person in a relationship. It's also when one partner tries to maintain power and control over the other through abuse or violence. The abuse can include isolating you from others, threatening you, your family, or even themselves if you don't do what they want, physical violence, or sexual acts. This is not about love. It's about control. It's not about anything you did wrong. It's about control. If you're in a relationship like this, you're not alone. There is help. Contact Refuge House, your school guidance counselor, or law enforcement. Just remember, there is help. This message is presented by this radio station and the North Florida chapter of Noble. For more information, visit noblenorthflorida.com, and together we can promote justice by action. Hi, I'm Cheryl Bolt. I met Pastor Gary Montgomery and his wife, JC, at Living Stones International while working here at Wave 94. I love Pastor Gary and JC. I love their hearts. I love their passion for the families who are affected by incarceration. Imagine how you would feel if you were unable to be with your children because of choices you now regret, choices that landed you in prison. We may never know the difference LSI, Living Stones International, is making for these families. What if LSI didn't have the funds to reach out to the children whose mom or dad or both were serving time? This is why I became a monthly LSI sponsor. 
Would you please consider giving to help support this important ministry? Give whatever God leads you to give as a one-time gift or as a monthly sponsor. Your giving will change lives and will encourage Pastor Gary and JC to continue the work they now are so committed to do. Go to their website, welivingstones.org, or Google Livingstones International Tallahassee and support this worthwhile ministry. Thank you. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? You got a king? Go fish that! Oh, come on! <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Stone Builders Hour with Pastor Gary and Elder JC. And we're talking to Goliath, the Philistine giant. And I want you to know, Goliath, I had to look up that shekel and it talked about your coat that you wore weighed about 5,000 shekels of bronze. That's 126 pounds. It was nothing for me to carry. Plus all of the other things that you had on your arms and your legs, they were about 15 to 16 pounds a piece. So you're talking about you were wet, you were rolling around in about a couple hundred pounds of weaponry and your armor. Uh-huh. That is a lot. I weighed about 500 pounds. Okay. All right. So I needed something to just feel like I was wearing some clothing. Oh, okay. So bad man here. Tension had been building over 40 days because you were taunting the Israelites mm-hmm. and you were saying, when was someone going to come down and fight you? And you were doing it morning and evening, even interrupting their prayer time. And damning Jehovah, their God. That's right. I That's unbelievable. And to continue with the story, David, when he went to deliver the food to the soldiers and his brothers, said, what? Behold, you, Glo- you are going to be the one who's going to show up before Goliath? You said, I can do it. I can do it. So what did you think? Well... I didn't know anything about David or his brothers before the ultimate battle between me and David. Morning and evening, 40 days of me insulting the Hebrew cowards, it was nearing the time for me to destroy Saul's army. I chose to taunt the Israelite in the morning and evening because it would be most disruptive to them because it was interfering with their uh, prayer time. And this was dampening their faith. <laughs> well, that was really mean. Because meantime, in the meantime, David was home. His father, Jesse, told him to take his brothers an epop, a parched corn, which is a couple, a couple pounds of cornmeal, and 10 loaves of bread, and carry 10 different cheeses to the captain of their thousand men army and look on his brothers he wanted to know how they were doing and to bring back news from the front line because that's how they got their information in those days families were responsible to help feed their sons while in the army but of course once David returned to the valley he heard shouting daily defiance and cussing (laughs) <laughs> and then he looked around and saw fear in the men of Israel. <laughs> David, just a teenager, became so angry. I can't believe you guys aren't fighting him. I can't believe you're not responding to the ranting and the yelling. And he's cursing our God. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of God? 
<laughs> yeah, I heard the little fellow shouting and carrying on, but he was like a fly on the wall. And my gods were with me, Dagon and Astar and Belzebah. I knew my day of victory was near. Yes, me, the champion, the Philistine of God. Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistine as I boldly stood tall ready to defeat anyone that Hebrew sent out to me. I would destroy this pest then take his head for my trophy and all the men of Israel when they saw me they fled like dogs with their tails between their legs and were afraid of me because of where I stood I could I could, uh, the valley was echoing, and I could hear them. I know they can hear me. And I heard the cowards of Israel say, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel, he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, King Saul, would enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. But those chickens, they were afraid because they knew that they would never be able to collect on that promise from their king. Mm. But yet, David heard you, and he was fuming. So he volunteered to fight you. And I know you said he was a fly on the wall. Due to his outspoken anger, David was invited to see King Saul and offers to fight you. You think you can handle him? Oh, <laughs> waste of my time. Okay. Saul counters that David is only a boy. But David explains <clears throat> that since Jehovah has been with him, see, he had faith, mustard seed faith. <laughs> he has been able to kill a lion and a bear who attacked his sheep. So he had some creds. He had some credit to watching over his father's sheep. Saul relents. And look at that. Saul gave up and allowed this boy to take his place and allows David to fight you, Goliath, (laughs) hoping that the Almighty was still with him. It took some persuasion But King Saul finally agreed to let David oppose you. And of course, he was going to give him all the armor he could carry. (laughs) You know, it was such a sight watching King Saul put his armor on the boy and gave him his sword that was so big that... It was so big that I had to laugh out loud. I could see the boy. He 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 was a clown out there, and and all the other men were looking at him. And but he decided at the last minute that he wasn't going to wear the king's armor, and he took it off. And at that time, I knew that I'm going to bite his head off and chew him up and spit him out. Well, just remember, he took it all off because he knew. The Almighty was on his side. But hold on, Goliath, because it sounds like we're about to hear the outcome of this historic battle. Listeners, please stay tuned, and we'll be right back to hear about the victory. We'll see. I will be victor. I got Dagon. But he has the Almighty. So we'll see who's going to be in control. We'll be right back. I feel like going on. I feel like going on. in to the Stone Builders Hour, a unique talk show hosted by Pastor Gary and Elder JC every Thursday at 5 o'clock on Wave 94.1. Ever been to a real down-home auction? 
Gospel Express Ministries is hosting its 25th benefit auction Saturday, November 14th at the Lighthouse Children's Home, 7771 East Mayhem Drive in Tallahassee. Bid on homage-made furniture, craft items, quilts, and tools. Also, farm fresh apples, cheeses, and butter. Breakfast starts at 7.30 a.m. and auction at 9. Contact Merrill Ditwaller, 850-447-2033. Man, what did you give in that math test? Dude, I failed it. I got an F. Bro, it was kind of hard, but I got to be on it. I thought I knew the answers, but I missed some days from school. Why are you sick? Nah, I just didn't feel like coming. Look, man, every day you miss school, you fall further behind in your classes. You miss information that help you pass quizzes and tests. It's important that you come to school. Don't become a statistic. When you skip school, you miss out on your potential. For more information, contact the Leon County Schools Office of Prevention, Intervention, Equity, and Services at 487-7306. Welcome back to the Stone Builders Hour with Pastor Gary as Goliath and Elder JC. And this has been really exciting to hear about the battle. But now we're going to hear about what really happened at the battle. Because <laughs> I know, Goliath, you think you're the winner. Right now, I also wanted to just give a shout out for our uh, the upcoming Gospel Express Ministry South Auction. Uh, it's going to be held November 14th, 2020. It's their 25th annual benefit auction. So mark your calendars. Come and join us. Breakfast starts at 730. The auction begins at 9. And if you're there for lunch, you can have barbecue chicken. It's going to be held at the Lighthouse Children's Home, 7771 East Mayhem Drive, Tallahassee, Florida. So come and join us because we uh, always try to attend to support yeah, great, gems, great, great ministry, but also great furniture, great fruits, uh, great just Jesus quilts, right? Things that you don't and normally tools. see around here. So come and join us. And also mark your calendar. Uh, for Farm Share, uh, we're having our annual Thanksgiving Farm Share. Mark your calendar, Saturday, November the 21st. It's going to start at 830. And we're going to give out, like we did last year, free turkey gift cards. So it's going to be on the first come, first serve. Uh, so uh, as soon as we run out. So we have Farm Share. And also our partners uh, will be on hand uh, um uh, DJ Speed Racer and DJ Boogie G of Blazing 102.3. Also, we have uh, Project Goo, Hinton Goo, and his group. He's the one who's bringing in. We're going to have free COVID-19 testing once again. And that's going to be Project Goo is bringing that into our uh, in the town. And we've got Destiny Church. Destiny Church will be giving away clothing once again. They brought a whole bunch of clothes. Yes, they did. Uh, racks and everything so people could shop like they were in a department store. Only they didn't have to pay anything. Now, it's all right to give a donation now, but that's good. This event is being sponsored by uh, Commissioner Bill Proctor, Living Stones, and Carter's Corner. And uh, make sure that it's going to be at... Um, the Gene Cox Stadium right. in the parking lot. And just know that we're not going back to Tallahassee Mall. We're going to be at Gene Cox Stadium behind the fairgrounds. So new location, much easier and much better in yes. terms of distribution. Yes, indeed. So Goliath, we're going to pick up where you left off because you were up there boasting and uh what is it? Thumbing on your chest about who's going to win this little event. I'm the giant. Okay, giant. I'm the bad one. As I said earlier, I could see King Saul giving a boy his armor and sword, and it was hilarious, and the boy refused. The boy then said a few words to his fellow Hebrews and started walking towards me down a hill into the valley. Mm. I could see the boy dressed in a tunic, carrying his shepherd's staff and sling and a pouch full of stones. The sheep herder approached me, so I cursed him, hurling threats and insult at him and his God. And as he gets closer to me, I mock him and I curse him again in the name of his God. And you know what he said to me? Here's what he said to me when he got close to me. He said, and I was ready to bite his head off. He said, 
You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled this day. The Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Go, David. Today I will give the carcass of the Philistine armies to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All right. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give all of you into our hands. Boy, that boy, after he told me that, man, he had my blood boiling. I'm sure. And I was getting ready to charge that boy. How dare he threaten me, Goliath, the mightiest warrior in this whole land? Well, we're going to take just a little detour because... Anyone who's a Bible student knows that the Philistines are merely a long forgotten people, the subject of old dusty volumes of dry and irrelevant history. Surprisingly, even the dictionary contains little useful information on them. So David did a good job. (laughs) <laughs> Webster Dictionary provides a typical definition, a native or inhabitant of ancient Philistia. And if you look at the explanation, it kind of goes a primary rule of thumb of what they call lexicography. Avoid defining a word by referencing it. You know, like I say, I'm from Hazelwood. So they'll say, well, she was a member of the group out of Hazelwood, Pennsylvania, you know, something like that. So it's like defining uh, a dog with dog-like qualities. So the definition proves equally futile when you say a person from Philisteria. So David did such a good job (laughs) that he wiped out the memory of of the whole people. So Goliath, after David cursed you, he went out after you with a running start. Now you remember now, this is just a team. (laughs) <laughs> so even though he might be his hormones might be kicking in, he still hasn't reached full manhood. So he had to get a running start. He started running, but yet in one continuous motion, David reached into his pouch and pulled out a round, smooth stone and placed it in the sling. I mean, I know I couldn't do that running. That's like trying to run, I guess, and fire (laughs) an arrow or whatever. And he swung it. He placed the stone in the sling and swung it into the air and let the stone fly. Do you know how much kind of speed and dexterity you had to have to be rolling your arm and swing a sling so the stone could fly out of it. Mm. The smooth round stone flew through the air and found its mark Mm. and sunk in the center of your forehead. (laughs) (laughs) You didn't. (laughs) And the giant fell on his face with a loud noise. You know you made a thud. Nine feet, nine inches, <laughs> carried over 500 pounds of weight on your all, all of the equipment you had on. So you went thump. <laughs> so David prevailed over Goliath, the Philistine, with a sling and a stone. Mm. And it's written or assumed that he had a few more stones in his pocket in case his brother's Goliath's brothers come running out of him. (laughs) He smote the Philistine and slew him. Since he didn't have his own sword, he ran over to Goliath's sword, which was probably heavy as heck, dragging it to where Goliath was laying and stood over him and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath. (laughs) <laughs> and cut off his head. Mm. And you know, I'm sure when he, the Goliath was looking up or he fell down face down, he couldn't look up. He was probably still alive. 
Mm. And when the Philistines army saw their champion was dead, you know what they did. They got out of Dodge. They <laughs> fled. So, Pastor Gary, what do you got to well, say about that? Well, since Goliath is dead, <laughs> I'm coming back as myself. I could imagine being there that time. It was as if time stood still. The Israelites on one side of the valley and the Philistines on the other side watching that boy David and Goliath fall to the ground. No one could say anything because they were all in shock. Once reality set in, the Israelites started to cheer and began to chase after the Philistines. Once the Philistines, once they saw Goliath go down, mm-hmm. they took off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so 1 Samuel 17, 53, 58, it reads, And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thy come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell by the way to Sharon, even unto Goth and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents. That means that they took everything. They took everything that the, since they were all in camp for about 40 days, they took everything out of their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine Goliath and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his armor, he took his head and his armor and his sword because he killed them. It was his stuff. Yeah. He put his armor in his tent, in David's tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistines, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? Ooh. And Abner said, As thy soul live, O king, I cannot tell. And the king Saul said, Inquire thou whose son is this stripling. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before King Saul with the head of Goliath in his hand. (laughs) And Saul said to him, Whose son art thou, thy young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Boy, that is amazing. He didn't even know out of his own group who this particular child was from. One of the things that's interesting as we um, look, review and look over this, that currently there's a lot of artifacts being dug up right now. We said David kind of wiped him out and you didn't know anything, but we know that the Philistine culture was as advanced as their weaponry. Their art was refined, being heavily influenced by uh, typical Mycenaean motifs with Egyptians and later Canaanite styles. Uh, Remember, they traveled, they were seafaring folks Mm -hmm. until they settled uh, in the areas. That's why they were always fighting with the Israelites, because they were settling in along the seafaring places yes so one of the things they always did was they had to always be the baddest and but israelites always uh, kind of overcame until this point of david and goliath where they really were fighting over whose gods were better they also were renowned for their production and consumption of alcoholic beverages so they did beer, wine, and strong drink. Mm. So I guess we have some things to uh, say that they were uh, yeah. partying. Wow. But remember, they also did a lot of partying in an unhealthy way. Yeah, you so, know that. Yeah. <laughs> you know that. You were falling big on. Yes, because they all... And one other thing that I'll, I'll end here, but one other thing, they also did a lot of singing and instrumental music. Uh, particularly the use of the lyre. And you know, that is kind of like a small harp. So they did have music. They had art and entertainment, but they were just huge people. 
So we're just one of the things that when we look at uh, the culture, we don't know much about it as it existed then, but as they find the artifacts, we know more of that. So the story of David and Goliath is really exciting. And one of the things we're going to do is we will take our final break. Uh, Stay tuned because we want to hear more about not only Goliath and the ending of this story, but what it means. How are your giants affecting your life, affecting what you want to do? And we want to give some encouraging words to those who need help in that way. So we'll be right back. Put your hand like this. A few years ago, I made a lot of mistakes and I made up my mind that I was going to do something about it. Let me tell you what I decided that I was going to do. I got to clean up what I messed up. I'm starting my life over again. I got to clean up what I messed up. Hi, I'm Cheryl Bolt. I met Pastor Gary Montgomery and his wife, JC, at Living Stones International while working here at Wave 94. I love Pastor Gary and JC. I love their hearts. I love their passion for the families who are affected by incarceration. Imagine how you would feel if you were unable to be with your children because of choices you now regret, choices that landed you in prison. We may never know the difference LSI, Living Stones International, is making for these families. What if LSI didn't have the funds to reach out to the children whose mom or dad or both were serving time? This is why I became a monthly LSI sponsor. Would you please consider giving to help support this important ministry? Give whatever God leads you to give as a one-time gift or as a monthly sponsor. Your giving will change lives and will encourage Pastor Gary and JC to continue the work they now are so committed to do. Go to their website, welivingstones.org, or Google Livingstones International Tallahassee and support this worthwhile ministry. Thank you. Guess who? It's me, Elder JC, asking your support for Living Stones Parenting Engagement Services. What is it? It will help parents be more active in their children's lives. Other ways to support? Donate online at WeLivingStones.org or call us at 850-219-0091. Remember, your donation is tax deductible. Everyone wants a comfortable, quality, affordable home they can own and be proud of. Affordable home ownership is now reality in Recolor Gardens in Crawfordville. Just 25 minutes from downtown Tallahassee or the beach. The developer with 40 years of experience builds each new home with modern kitchens, with two, three, or four bedrooms, and with many options such as screened-in porches, large garden bathtubs, and built-in electric generator plug-in outlets to help you make it through the next storm. Down payment and closing assistance for multiple government programs, credit repair, and mortgage loans are available. Call or text Lamar, 850-727-3532 for an appointment to see your next home. That's 850-727-3532 or visit LLC.com. That's LLC.com. What a story of the Bibles with a hero and a villain take the stage. Goliath the villain, a Philistine warrior from Goth, was over nine feet tall, wore armor weighing 125 pounds, and carrying a 15-pound spear. Wow. Scholars believe he may have descended from the Echonim who were ancestors of a race of giants living in Canaan when Joshua and Caleb led the people of Israel into the Promised Land. Another theory to explain Goliath's giantism is that it may have been caused by anterior pituitary. 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 
pituitary tumor. All right, you got that. <laughs> or excessive secretion of growth hormones from the pituitary gland. Right. Got it. David, the hero, was Israel's second and most important king. His family was from Bethlehem, also called the city of David in Jerusalem. The youngest son of Jesse's family, David was part of the tribe of Judah. His grandmother, his great-grandmother, was Ruth. Yes. David's story is recorded in 1 Samuel 16.1 and also uh, in uh, uh, 1 Kings 2. Along with being a warrior and king, David was a shepherd and accomplished musician. Also, David was an ancestor of Jesus Christ, who is often called the son of David. Mm. Perhaps David's greatest accomplishment was to be called a man after God's own heart. And you can find that in 1 Samuel 13, 14 and in Acts 13, 22. Well, we know the story of Bethlehem is also the birthplace of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And we also know that uh, being David being a prolific musician because he wrote all the Psalms. And one of the things when you read them, they are musical in terms of how they sound and how uh, you hear his deepest convictions about his belief in, in God through the psalm. So we, we know he definitely was a man after God's own heart. Uh, life lessons from David and Goliath audience. Hmm. Mm. David's faith in God caused him to look at the giant from a different perspective mm. because to him, Goliath was small. To him, Goliath was merely a mortal man defying his all-powerful God because he couldn't believe it, that the men were even listening to the things that he was saying and not doing anything about it. David looked at the battle from God's point of view. And I think that's how that's we so need good. to look at our problems when they're giants. If we look at giant problems and impossible situations from God's perspective, we realize that God will fight for us and with us. Praise God. I know it. I'm a firm believer in that. I'm a witness. I am a living testimony. <laughs> That's right. When we put things in proper perspective, we see more clearly and we can fight more effectively. David chose not to wear the king's armor. Why? Because it was cumbersome and unfamiliar. He was more comfortable with his simple sling, a weapon he was skilled at using. And even Goliath scoffed at that. God will use your unique skills he's already placed in your hands. So don't worry about wearing the king's armor. He's given you your weapons. Just be yourself and use the familiar gifts and talents God has given you. He will work miracles through you. When the giant criticized, insulted, and threatened not only God, but even all the men, <laughs> David didn't even stop to think about it or even waver. Everyone else was doing what? shaking in their boots. They were cowered in fear. But David ran to the battle. He knew that action needed to be taken. He just couldn't believe that he had been out there all that time making all that noise and no one did That's right. anything. That's right. So the, the young man or the teen who was, that God said he was a man after his own heart took took it by the reins and did the right thing despite discouraging insults and fearful threats only God's opinion mattered to him and there is um, you know when you think about some of the things that we do we want to be able to say I can face my giants Amen. Hey, I can face my giants 
Are you facing a giant problem or impossible situation? Stop for a minute and refocus. Can you see the case more clearly from God's vantage point? Do you need to take courageous action in the face of insults and fearful circumstances? Yes. Do you trust that God will fight for you and with you? Remember, God's opinion is the only one that matters. Yes, it does. Praise God. Uh, how, about a, how about a scriptural prayer? That sounds great How about to a scriptural me. prayer? Oh, Lord, scripture tells me have no fear. And I want to hear and say yes. But as life threads its way and my circumstances change, I confess that I'm feeling so stressed. Yes. Oh, Lord, may I cling to the promise you give of a peace that surpasses it all. Come calm this troubled heart. May I never depart from you, Lord, whatever befalls. O oh Lord, I am never alone. My shepherd, my father, my king. So I walk in your way and promise each day to live in the freedom that you bring. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. I say amen. 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 Well, just remember that we're giving you notice again. Don't forget, put it on your calendar, put it in your phone. November 14th, the upcoming 25th annual benefit auction for Gospel Express Ministry South. We know it uh, intimately as GEMS, but it's going to start at breakfast at 7.30, auction at 9. There will be a barbecue chicken lunch at noon. It's going to be held at the Lighthouse Children's Home, 7771 East Mayhan Drive. Tallahassee, Florida, and just know that you will see some of the finest quilts handmade. They have cheeses and big blocks, yeah, round blocks, round square circuit. blocks, mm -hmm. uh, sausages, summer uh, sausages, lots of apples. Chips. Yes, and Pretzels the kind of potato chips that we like. And apples that you can really smell. Yeah, yes. Because they don't have all that wax on them. Yes. Because they're grown from the Amish farms. All right. So come on out. You'll, there will be something there for everybody. Bring the children. This is an opportunity for them to see a real live person say I blah, 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 you know how they do the bidding um, so bring the family it's going to be a, a great day again November the 14th breakfast starts at 7.30 auction at 9 that's a Lighthouse Children's Home 7771 East Mayhan Drive praise God and also mark your calendar once again for the Farm Share <coughs> Thanksgiving uh, giveaway uh, brought to you by Commissioner Bill Proctor Blazing 102.3, uh, Goo, Project Goo, uh, Destiny Church, Carter's Corner, and Living Stones. That's going right. to be Saturday, November 21st at the Gene Cox Stadium starting at 8.30. And we're going to have free turkey gift cards. It's going to be on a first come, first serve. So you got to get there and uh, got to get there early. And plus... Uh, Project Goo is bringing free COVID-19 testing. We got to stay healthy. Yes. Praise God. Pastor and I have done it. So, you know, just considering where we are in today's times, we need to stay on top of these things. So, we hey, appreciate y'all staying tuned. Remember, $4.80 a month. Yes. Hey, peace out. Till All next right. week. See you next week. Your grace and mercy brought me through I'm living this moment because of you